Well, I think um, when I left school, uh, I started to organise big events for my friends, you know, literally just taking 30 to 40 people away to cottages or castles around the country. And so the idea of organising things and making things happen that were fun and a bit different was always something that was just in me, that concept of having an adventure. So I'd organise trips up to Scotland or to Wales or to France, and we'd go off hiking and trekking and camping, and I'd get a whole group of people together. And the energy from that event um, left people with great memories. Even now when I bump into people that I've not seen for a while, they always remember the stuff that we did and the crazy antics that we got up to. And so it was a sort of a logical extension for me eventually to gravitate into that as the, as the way I made my living. Um, so I think the first big thing that I did was I produced the world's fastest produce, um, produce feature film um, back in the early 90s. And I had 600 people working on it because everybody would like to make a feature film. And I said, well, let's do it in a world record-breaking time. And um, it was very stressful. And I brought together all sorts of people and got the, the thing sponsored. And we set this world record um, with Dame Edna Everidge and Richard Harris and all sorts of famous people in this movie. Um, and the record still exists today. I've still got it. And uh, that set me off on the road that I'm still on now. Well, certainly I'm probably better known for the work that I've done with you and McGregor and Charlie Borman in Long Way Round and Long Way Down. And I think, for me, that was really a culmination of all the lessons I'd learnt on a lot of other things that we'd done, bringing together the book, the DVD, the TV series, getting the um, expedition sponsored, actually, you know, getting the money together for an expedition is difficult. Then filming it whilst you're actually on the road is quite tough. And then turning it into all the media-related stuff when you come back in, in, and in involving the website and stuff like that. So that was certainly something which I think you know, put us on uh, centre stage. Um, and it was very enjoyable doing it. Uh, was it the culmination of my career? Probably. But I don't know. I just published a book today, literally today. I've got my own book coming out called Big Earth, 101 Amazing Adventures. So what will happen in the future, I don't know. But if I did nothing else, I think all of that is a nice legacy to have. It's definitely very satisfying when people stop you in the street, and it still happens even now, and people say, I love that series, it changed my life, I've gone off travelling, um, uh, um, and people have only had nice things to say. So it's very, very satisfying that we did something that touched a lot of people. And if you're not into motorbiking, it doesn't really matter. The biking was the vehicle by which we had the adventure. So you could have been on horses, you could have been riding you know, bicycles, I suppose. Um, but the idea was that we went out into the world, we enjoyed the planet, and hopefully did some good at the same time with UNICEF. And I think everybody should do that. You know, nowadays there's so much stress in life with mortgages and trying to pay back student loans, you know, trying to you know, find the rent and uh, have all sorts of pressures on people nowadays. So it's only when you go out and have an adventure I think that you can cut yourself free from that. And although you may have to come back to it, you come back with a fresher mind. And I think if we've inspired people to go off and travel and do adventures, that's only a good thing. Well, I absolutely put my hand on my heart and say I love Britain. You know, I've travelled to loads of places all over the shop, but I still think the islands that we live on are pretty fascinating. Um, I want to say something else glamorous in a minute, and I will do. Like, I love travelling to the Pacific. Um, we sailed on the Soren Larsen, which is a tall ship, and you sail it in a very traditional way, going up the ratlins and dropping the canvas sails down. On another time, we were deep sea fishing in Atutaki, right in the middle of the Pacific in the Cook Islands, and paddling canoes out there and wild camping on the beach. And there was something really liberating about that. But I also loved the time I spent in, say, Guyana, um, in the tropical rainforest there, riding with the Vaquero cowboys. But I loved being in Panama, looking at the Panama Canal, seeing those huge Panamax container ships squeezing their way through these locks. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the thrill of travel, and I love the thrill 
of the adventure and I quite like also um, the idea of seeing new things. I'm not somebody who sits still very well. But coming back to Britain, I equally loved going across Dartmoor. I loved going up to explore the North Norfolk coast. Uh, I loved going on a narrowboat in North Wales and I liked climbing Ben Nevis and also walking along Hadrian's Wall. So people instinctively think you've got to travel far away from adventure, but it's actually on your doorstep. Well, Big Earth is my production company, if you like, or it's my company, and it was there to facilitate me being able to do all the things that I want to do. Um, and it really is that simple. You know, if we want to be able to make a TV programme, we know how to do that. We have the experience of how to do it. We can produce books, we can make DVDs, we can build websites, we can do whatever we want to do. Um, so it's there really as a facility to allow amazing things to happen. And as part of that, I thought when I came back from having done these trips with you and, and Charlie, that maybe other people would want to have an adventure in their life, but they probably haven't got three and a half months and a whole production crew behind them. Have they? Most people don't. You know what I mean? We only do that because that's our business and it's only my business because I've wanted to make it happen. But most people would still want an adventure. So the idea behind the book was to say, you can have an adventure in a day or two days or say you've got two weeks or say you want to do something very difficult or you want to do something fairly easy. So the book is full of inspiration and that's what Big Earth is about. And saying the Earth is out there, go and explore it in the way that you want to. You don't have to try and kill yourself. If you want to do something moderate for yourself, it's still challenging for you, because we're not all rock climbers, you know? So some people, like when I did the Via Ferrata in uh, Italy, there are different standards of climbing there. There's the easy route, the medium one, and the hard one. And that's what we're all about, isn't it? You can start off at an easy level and say, I want to get better and do something a bit more difficult. So Big Earth is about enjoying the world doing some good at the same time and just getting out there and having an adventure. Well, I think the, the title producer director is only a title because people want to be able to sort of, you know, put a label on you a little bit in this, in this world. We all need labels. But to me, I just want to make things happen. You know, so if you want to call me a producer in a traditional sense, which is the person that puts the money together, puts the deal together, puts the infrastructure together to make the thing happen. And traditionally, the director is the creative person that interprets it, the idea from a creative point of view and spends the money. Then I want to be one and the same, because if I found the money, I want to then determine how we spend it and make sure that if we promise something to somebody here, that we deliver it here. So I tend to be involved right from the beginning to the end. Um, and in that role, I love it, because you actually have firm control over everything and hopefully deliver back to everybody what you'd promised at the beginning. Well, <clears throat> my advice to anybody moving into the media, I think there's an area here that nobody ever bothers talking to somebody about. Okay, so in other words, you could have gone through as many courses as you want, learnt as much as you want. Now, it depends what you're in. If you're in a technical field, then what I'm about to say probably doesn't matter so much. But it's your personality. You know, are you good with people? Are you able to persuade people to do something? Are you able to package an idea up in a way that people get it? You know, and this is, this is part of the problem with a lot of people in the media. They think that um, it's all about just how to shoot or how to make, manage a camera. But really it's not. It's about you as an individual. And not enough time, I think, is given to say to people, this is how you sell an idea. This is how you could improve upon the way that you actually sort of relate to people. Because it's a real people on people industry. And to make something happen, ultimately you've got to persuade somebody else to say yes. Or to get the job that you want. It's not a question about showreels. It's a question of knocking on doors, being able to persuade somebody to get you on board as, a, as opposed to somebody else. Um, so I think the answer is that you say to people, look at you as a person, 
because if you're outgoing, bright, bubbly, vivacious and a good communicator, you, then you'll get on. If you're going to just send your CV out to people and hope that you're going to get a job, then you'll be hoping for quite a long time. On the other hand, you might want to innovate and do something of your own to create a bit of a buzz around what you've done specifically. So you might just come up with an idea that you want to shoot, that you put it out there, you show other people this. With, particularly with the internet, the possibilities now for people to show their own individual talent is endless. And if you've done something amazing, and the, the beauty of the internet, I think, is that you can do something quite simple, and it can suddenly capture people's imaginations. But to get something commissioned on TV at the moment is really hard. It is so difficult that it's almost impossible to get there. You know? You know so a, a conventional television route is difficult, but with the internet opening up as it is, and companies wanting to sponsor stuff, and get involved in stuff by a different funding model outside the the, you know, the the traditional route. I think actually the world's everybody's oyster now, and they need to think differently. They need to be more creative, and they need to build on their their own personalities to allow them to do it. So it's a long answer, but it's a really important answer. If people just think that stuff's going to come to them because they technically know what they're doing, it doesn't work.